Hello, I'm David Chaston with 98.9, brought to you by interest.co.nz. This week, get everything you need to know in 90 seconds to 9 o'clock with news that the next big risk in China won't come from trade, but rather from local government debt. Firstly, however, today's dairy auction was a bit of a non-event. Prices were virtually unchanged, dipping a mere 0.3% of a percent in US dollar terms and even less in New Zealand dollar terms. There was a chunky 42,000 tonnes sold, the same as two weeks ago, and the highest volume since August 2015. If anything is of note, it is the 2.5% rise in the butter price, ending a continuous fall since May. Overall prices are now 14% lower than this time last year, but today's event will not be changing any payout forecasts. In the US, new data shows that industrial production increased for a fourth straight month in September, led by small gains in factory and mining output, but the growth momentum has slowed sharply. And American employers had more than 7 million unfilled jobs in the first time on record, reflecting a historically tight labour market that is causing some businesses to struggle to find workers. And Wall Street is up strongly today, gaining almost 2% in late trade, and that follows good gains in Europe overnight. All this is in sharp contrast contrast to Shanghai, which yesterday lost the thick end of 1%, continuing to track its down, track downward. That has now compounded to a 10% fall from the start of October. Rescue plans have been drawn up. Ratings agency S&P is warning of titanic risks in Chinese bond markets. Local authorities have almost $6 trillion in off-balance sheet debt. That is equivalent to about half of China's GDP. Defaults on that pile are growing. Much of the build-up relates to local government financing vehicles, which don't necessarily have the full financial backing of local governments themselves. The EU's trade surplus came in much larger than expected in August. The 2018 surplus with the US swelled 20% compared with the same period in 2017. In Germany, however, business sentiment is falling, and quite quickly now. It was negative in September, but has deteriorated sharply in October in an influential survey. In Australia, the minutes of the RBA October 2nd meeting show that they expect the weak Australian dollar to hold up domestic economic growth. They indicated that the next move in official rates is more likely to be an increase than a decrease, although they do not see a near-term change. They also are showing some concerns over sharp credit tightening as a result of the Haynes Commission report. The US Treasury 10-year yield is unchanged today at 3.16%, but their two-turn curve has slipped to just on 29 basis points. Gold is up $2 and now at $1,228 an ounce. US oil prices are a little higher today at just over $72 a barrel. The Brent benchmark is just on $81.50 a barrel. And the Kiwi dollar is again today firmer at 65.9 US cents, its highest in two weeks and bolstered by the strong CPI data yesterday. On the cross rates, we're also up to 92.3 Aussie cents and 56.9 euro cents. That puts the TWI at 69.9 and also a two-week high. I'm David Chaston. That was 98.9, brought to you by interest.co.nz.